Now, one of the other things we're going to do is we're going to look at, uh, let's add Bootstrap. And let's see if we can add Bootstrap to our home page. Okay, so when you go to Bootstrap, it's twitter.github.io slash Bootstrap. But just do a search for Bootstrap, you'll find it. And I want you to find the part that says Customize. Man, I don't even remember where it is. Let me just zoom out a little bit. There it is. Up at the top, Customize. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're only going to grab the CSS components we want for our website because there's no need to download other stuff. So where it says choose components, click toggle all to uncheck. Notice how everything's unchecked. And the ones I highly recommend everyone do would be, for example, we're going to do the grid system. So I do want you to select that. That's going to be a key part of our templates. So we're going to use the grid system to, to lay out some items on our page. Um, if the forms, buttons, if you like the buttons they had and some of those things, you can click which ones you like out of there. Icons, not a bad idea if you want to use the icons. Um, I'm going to do the, the navs, the nav bar. Please do check thumbnails because we're going to either use that or we're going to use the media component. I like thumbnails, but I'm going to select the media component also. Now, if you're not sure what anything is, you can always go back and you'll notice where it says components here. There's a bunch of links. You just click on components to find out what you want. And then I would select all JS for JavaScript components that you might use. Carousels for like the image scrolling thing. Although there's some great plugins you might be able to use, but I'm going to do it anyway. Collapse, drop down, modals. I'm going to add these things here too because I might want those. The other thing I'm going to do is under responsive, I'm going to go ahead and click this narrow tablets and below, tablets to desktop, and large desktop. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us more flexibility when it comes to our responsive design. Second. Okay, then on select jQuery plugins, just leave them all checked because that can help. We can do some stuff with it. And then scroll down to the bottom. Once you've had that all selected, just click customize and download. Okay, once that zip file's open, I want you to click on the little arrow here and you can just do show in folder. And what I want you to do is I want you to extract these files directly to your child theme folder. So I right click on it and I choose extract all. And on my destination, I want to go to my child theme folder. So what you want to do is when you extract it, you want to extract it to your child theme folder. Now there's already all those files that were part of you know, my bootstrap from before. I'd already installed this once, but now I want to clean it up. So I'm just going to click it again and I'm going to choose extract and it's going to find conflicts. So what I'm going to do is I am going to replace everything. So I'm going to check do this for all current items. Click yes. Click copy and replace. Actually click do this for the next four conflicts and copy and replace. So I just basically write over all of those files now and I have a new set of CSS, IMG, and JS. Now I realized um, you might have had an images folder. If you had one, you can move files over to IMG, but this is going to just be for images for your, your layout. It's not images for the WordPress site. Okay, So you should have that installed, and I'm, I'm going to move forward on this. And so what I want to do now is I want to make a connection to my bootstrap.css style sheet. So if you look at CSS, there's bootstrap.css. There's bootstrap.min.css. And there is this, this um, leftover from my bootstrap project. I don't want that file anymore because that's going to mess with my theme. So I'm just going to delete that. Okay, you don't have to. I mean, you, you might like it and, and like what it does to your site. So, you know, you don't have to unless you've already deleted it. Then too late. Sorry. So we're going to link to the CSS folder, bootstrap.css. We want to get that link. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. So you're looking at header. Sorry, let me hide that. You see where it says header.php. Make sure you're in your child theme folder. Make sure you're not messing with the parent. Make sure you're not in whiteboard, okay? And then what I want you to do is um, I like you to just move that to the other view. So move header.php to the right-hand side. And then on the left-hand side, I'd like you to just open up. Uh, actually, we don't even have to do this. Hold on. I can do this without looking. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to add a tag. And we're going to do it. I think we should do it right after. Uh, actually, you know what? We do need to do this. I take it back. Let's compare header.php with our bootstrap project. Sorry. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to open up one of my HTML pages from the bootstrap project. Bootstrap project to column, and I want to focus on the head. Okay. Now, on the head, there is this meta tag with a viewpoint, viewport, content, blah, blah, blah. And I want you to look on line 24 of your header.php. Okay, this is the meta tag we're talking about here. You see that on the right hand side where it says meta name equals viewport, content equals width equals device width. Okay, what this is all about is this is about resizing on mobile devices. So if you have a tablet and you turn it sideways, you need it to rescale to fit the new width. And then you turn it side, you turn it upside down or right side up, or you turn it the other way. It needs to rescale. And one of the things they give here is a tip if for those who have mobile Safari. Um, can I just say if you have an iPhone and you're using uh, Safari as a browser, ditch it. It has a bug that makes it so it doesn't automatically resize. Get Chrome or some other browser. But Safari has a bug, and they have yet to fix it. This has been around for a while, and they need to fix it, but they don't. So on here, just leave it like this and ignore that comment because you don't ever want to disable user zooming. And if you put maximum scale equals 1, that means they'll never be able to zoom in on the text. And if they can't read your text, they're stuck, and they're not going to be happy with you. So I like this initial scale equals 1 and knowing that it works on most browsers. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I, I think right after that, I'm gonna add a new link, okay? Oh, by the way, if you look on the bootstrap, it says scale equals 1.0, so I'm gonna change that to match it too. So I'm gonna add a .0 on this meta tag with the name of viewport. Now I'm gonna add a link tag. In fact, I want this link here, so I'm gonna copy that, Actually, I'm going to go ahead and copy the comment, too. And I'm going to paste it right here on line 25. Okay, So I'm pasting it into the header. And the problem with this, guys, is that this link here is not going to work correctly. And I'll show you how it's not going to work correctly. Save your changes. And then what I want you to do is save the changes in header. And I'd like you to go to your WordPress site. So find your WordPress site. And I want you to, I hope this is the right one, I'm going to choose view page source, and I want to see if my link is in there. And right away I see link href equals css bootstrap.min.css, and I'm going to change that to just bootstrap.css. You see that href equals quotation mark and then css.bootstrap? We need to actually put the full URL. So we're going to use a uh, PHP tag. And it looks like this, PHP like so. Start with this tag here to begin with. What we need to do is we need to stick right before the CSS. By the way, I need a slash there too in front of the CSS. We need to get the, 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 the web address for our style sheet directory. Okay. So what I'm going to do is put a space, and I believe it's get style sheet underscore directory underscore uri open and close parentheses semicolon. You're like, whoa, that's a lot. What this is, is it's a function using PHP and all, oh wait, I one more thing, echo. So Here's the completed code. I have it highlighted, and let me pause the video so you can take a look at it and get it right. 